and then I grab this line real steep like that, and yeah, it's like one, two, three, and then we're doing a set, and we're going around backwards, and I'm like, oh my god, what do I do with my hands? So this is Jake Arner Memorial Airport. Um, we're here because if you've been following along, we have a two week TFR presidential um, temporary flight restriction back at home. We are gonna do something a little different. I've noticed like a lot of comments of people that are new to the channel new to paramotors and basically know absolutely nothing about paramotors so i want to go kind of like back to basics and talk about how to control a paramotor i've said a lot of times in the past that i don't ever want to teach like how to fly in a video but these concepts are so basic that i'm not afraid of anyone like using them to go out and train themselves rather than getting formal training, which is highly recommended. But yeah, I just wanna kinda talk about some of the basic stuff and then a little bit more advanced of control methods and 2D steering, because a lot of people have asked about that recently. I'll explain that when we get in the air. We got about half an hour, there's thunderstorms in the area, so we're gonna keep an eye on those also. What you got there, champ? Green pea snack crisps by Harvest Snaps, lightly salted. Sounds like some rabbit food to me. Okay, first lesson in how to control paramotor. This is very, very basic, by the way. Don't take any of this as like, oh, it looks easy. Because there's a whole lot more to it. I'm just gonna explain it in very basic terms. So, in my hands here, I've got two brake toggles between my index and middle fingers. I've got the A's, which are the front of the wing, around my thumbs. And then in this hand, I have my throttle, which is my ring and pinky finger for power. All right, so I'm gonna run forward. I'm gonna pull light pressure on the A's while uh, pulling the wing up, mostly with my body. Run, 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 get the wing up, add the power get on the brakes. And as I come off the ground, I pull a little bit of brake pressure, basically to give myself lift. All right, that was the quick and dirty, how to launch a paramotor. Don't go try it at home, because it won't work like that. All right, go pull is being positioned. I gotta avoid these trees. All right, so it, it dawned on me, I've never made a video this basic, um, but I've started to realize just looking at people's comments that there are quite a number of people watching the videos currently that don't know like anything about paramotors. So this is paramotor basics on how to control your paramotor in the air. Like I said, I'll reinforce the idea. Get formal training if you're gonna get into the sport. It's not worth risking trying to do it yourself. There's just way too much to it to try to learn all on your own, in my opinion. So let's start out basic. In my left hand, I've got my handy throttle. They have different ones, different hand grips and everything. But basically, throttle is up and down. Some people think that you have to pull on your brakes to go up and down, but really that's only momentary up and down. Your real climb and descent is controlled by your throttle. So I've got a bunch of trees in front of me. I wanna get some altitude just in case my motor dies. I'm just gonna squeeze my throttle nice and smooth. Power increases and I start going up. That's all there is to that. Now look, you see over here, I've got a nice open field. I wanna come down and plan it roll off the throttle, nice and easy, and I start gliding down at a nice, comfortable angle, 
and then somewhere in the middle is cruise power. Super simple. Damn! Little deer is going for it. All right, so up next, we have the brake toggles. You can see those here. They're stowed on a magnet. And uh, very simply, if that's a word, simply, yeah, as an orange juice. If you pull right, you go right. If you pull left, you go left. The way it works is it makes drag on the wing and slows that side down, essentially. So very simple to do. If I want to go right, because there's high tension lines in front of me and I don't want to get zapped and die, I'll just pull on the right one just a little bit and it'll make a nice turn. Same thing if I want to swing left, pull left. But here's where it gets a little tiny bit more complicated. We also have weight shift. And weight shift kind of sounds self-explanatory. It's shifting your weight in the harness. The way the suspension system works is your glider is clipped into this arm over here and this arm is fitted throughout the harness and then the whole motor and frame basically hangs off the back of this arm. So what that means is this harness moves. It articulates left and right. To do it proper, you would kind of get your weight up top close to this riser and then shift your weight in the harness onto your right leg. Now my center of gravity is shifted to the right and in the seat I'm actually tilting the seat board to the right. And you can see we're carving a nice slow right turn. If I come back to neutral, we can fly straight again. I'll hold uh, my go pole. If we want to go left, shift your weight left. You can cross your leg all the way over to exaggerate it, but I never do that in real life. So we just made a 90 degree left turn. Now the way you combine both of those in, uh, in real life and in good form is to use both of them together. If anyone's familiar with flying an airplane, you have ailerons and rudder, and basically to make a coordinated turn, you use both of them together. So if I wanted to make a right 360 around this house, proper form would be look right, lean right, and then pull right. And I can make a nice smooth turn. With this wing, it doesn't take much. I use two fingers on my brake. You can really steer around with very light pressure. So if you're thinking in terms of an airplane, if you do a shallow turn, you can kind of just use your ailerons, bank it, and do a very shallow turn. But when you start to get into steeper turns, you have to combine your elevator and sometimes your power too. So in a paramotor, if I wanted to do a really tight 360, what it would look like is look, lean, pull, add power, and then pull both brakes. And pulling both brakes in the turn, it really, it slows down your forward speed while creating more lift. So your radius of your turn gets tighter, if that makes sense. How am I doing? Am I, am I sounding like a good teacher? If I sound like a good teacher, hit the thumbs up. <laughs> okay, final concept. Um, I've seen a lot of comments about this recently, I think because I'm using like a lot of different camera angles. And some people noticed that my brake line over here actually has two lines. And that's pretty standard for wings of this class, like a, uh, a slalom style. Now, any beginner glider or like any paragliding wing that's not designed for a motor conventionally only has one line. Okay, so what this system does, it's called 2D steering because it gives you like two dimensions really. This main line, the inner one, goes through this pulley and then spreads out to 95% of the wing on the right side. The other line doesn't go through the pulley and just connects to like 5% of the tip. And what that means is if I stow this brake, I'll stow both brakes and I pull on just the tip line. All I'm doing is curling that tip around, but it's extremely effective. Look at this, one finger and it just kind of rolls you right into a steep turn. If I pull on the other line, the same thing will happen. 
but it's a more lifty turn, if that makes sense. It's a lot more pressure, like I'm pulling more pounds of force to do the same turn. Because it's grabbing like more surface area of the wing. The tip is almost like power steering. And the way you use these two lines together is if I pull close to my body, like in line with the riser, I engage the tip more than the center line. But if I push out, you can see it goes through the pulley and I'm engaging like the whole center half of the wing. So one example of how you would use that is if you wanted to do a big slalom turn, you could approach the pylon and start the turn with just the tip, push out while you're in the turn to get that lift and tighten the radius, and then like use the opposite tip to roll back and then be right on heading. So it kind of looked like this. Now there's a lot of different ways you can use all that stuff together and it just kind of, it gives you uh, more options, more capability. Something you kind of learn to work with over time. I think I'm gonna head back to the airport. It's gotta be getting close to sunset, but I wanna get a lot of altitude on the way there. So I'm gonna throttle up and climb. All right, let's talk about some more advanced things. A lot of people, like I'll say, I'm gonna trim out. And um, often people are like, what does that mean? But it's hard for me to explain every single time when I'm just in the moment. So here's the explanation for trimming out. Um, there's different ways to control our speed. Paramotor wings, they just wanna fly at one constant speed. It's not like adding power makes you go faster or slower. You have to change the wing's angle of attack to go faster or slower. And that's what the trims do. So basically, on the back of the riser, we got the trim, which is this, one on each side. And on the front, we have this guy, which is uh, referred to as a speed bar. Now, I don't have my speed bar set up, but I'll explain that in a second. So the trims are on the back, and they link to the Ds, and the Cs, and the Bs, slightly on this wing. And basically, when you let the trim out, it lets up the back edge of the wing. So you're changing the angle of attack relative to the wind. Like if you stick your hand out of the window and you do one of these numbers, you're flattening it out so it can go faster. I'll do that, I'll dump the trims. What I do is I put a finger on each of them and then you push the little thing. You see it slid out. My wing just dove a little bit. These lines went up, shifted like that. And now we're cruising a little bit faster. This wing, I cruise with it in the middle. That's what's recommended, basically. That's where 95% of my flying is. If you wanna go even faster, you can use the speed bar. And I rarely have my speed bar set up. I'd like to fly with it more, but it's really just, in my opinion, not that necessary. So the speed bar hooks onto this line. It goes down through a pulley that's connected to the arm, then a pulley connected to my harness, and then there's a bar behind my knees and you hook it on your uh, heel and push it forward, extend your knees and lock them. And what that'll do is it grabs this and pulls down like the A's, B's and C's. And on this particular wing, I would say about a third of the speed range is in the trims and the other two thirds comes from the speed bar. Now the thing is when you increase your speed, you kind of reduce your maneuverability. So at slower speeds, you can throw the wing around and go crazy. But once you get going really fast on these wings, you're basically, damn, that's a nice house, on a straight line and you can make minor course corrections. So I don't really do that often, but it's a nice thing to do because this wing will haul ass. It'll do like uh, 50 something miles an hour. Is that like a NASCAR car, number 36? That's crazy. It looks like a NASCAR car. Oh, there's two of them, 72. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my teacher moment, my tutorial on how to control a paramotor in the air. Maybe you learned something, maybe you knew everything and it was boring, but thanks for watching. You know, thanks for sticking around till now. I'd like to do more very basic videos.
many people think that I build my paramotors and they're not commercially available. And they're like, oh, you should mass produce these. You'd make a lot of money. But they are like being mass produced right now. I bought this. So I was going to go over kind of like a, basically my motor and why I fly it. And then like Jacqueline's motor and why she flies it. And any other pilot that I come across with a different motor, do like an interview session with them. So let me know in the comments if you like that sort of thing. If you're not into it, that's cool. I won't do it. But I'm going to do a thing. I want to do a sat on pole cam. So I'm not really going to explain much of how this goes. But I brace on my riser. Maybe I will. And then I grab this line real steep like that. And yeah. It's like one, two, three. And then we're doing a sat. And we're going around backwards. And I'm like, oh my god, what do I do with my hands? And then you kind of give it a little outside break, a little inside break. And now you're like mad dizzy and you're like, who the hell the water? Okay, I'm gonna keep keep it rolling and keep teaching till we touch the ground. Because that's today's episode. Um, paramotors kind of fly like pendulums. They it is a pendulum, or a weight hanging on a string. So left and right, and forward and aft, you can have oscillations. And one of the cool things is you use those oscillations in a good way to maneuver. And that's part of learning to fly. So basically, when I land, I get a big swoop, kill my motor, Hope I didn't come in downwind and biff. Oh, hey, it was lumpy. You wouldn't have liked it. It would have been possible. It wasn't dangerous, but you wouldn't have liked it. I feel like such a teacher. That whole time I just rambled on like, this is how you fly a paramotor. I hope people enjoy it. You better enjoy it! Alright, we're all packed up. About ready to go. I have to go break in the FBO and use the bathroom. But, I'll keep it short. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, if you do, leave a comment don't forget let me know what you think about the whole like super basic beginner stuff like my paramotor and why i like it and jacqueline's paramotor and why she likes it <laughs> when i fly it yeah next time next time when it's not lumpy and thunderstormy all right i will see you guys in the next one jacqueline don't kill it oh